lot of people have been talking about sustainable development without knowing or understanding exactly what it means. The phrase sustainable development was defined as early as 1987 by the Brundtland Report, our common feature from the United Nations Commission on Environment and Development. Sustainable development, it said, is a development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. In plain language, that could mean don't cut or burn all the trees in the forest so that the next generations after you have something for their greenery, flood control, housing and furniture. Don't emit too much carbon in your vehicles so that your children can breathe fresh air and have good mental health so that their own children will be born healthy and productive too. For companies, they define sustainable development as a so-called triple bottom line, people, planet and profit. This concept, explains the BPI Foundation, aims to measure the financial, social, and environmental performance of a company over a period of time. Most corporate social responsibility projects are about people, how to educate the poor, including how to educate teachers themselves, how to uplift their plight, how to give them access to basic needs like schools, water, electricity, and a very important technology like smartphones, internet, open university or education, and simply transacting their day-to-day -day financial needs at the least cost and bother. Tonight, we have for our guest a Senior Vice President of the Bank of the Philippine Islands and the Executive Director of the BPI Foundation and Chief Sustainability Officer of BPI, Fidelina Fay Adan Corcuera. Together with Tony Lopez. Tonight we have for our guest the Senior Vice President of the Bank of the Philippine Islands. She is also the Executive Director of BPI Foundation, Ms. Faye Corcuera. Thank you for being on our show. Thank you for being on our show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just so proud to talk about yeah. sustainability and and now the impact of uh, BPI Foundation under yeah. your leadership. Can you, let's let's just take a look at. Um, your history first. Uh, you were the chief uh, HR officer of companies like Oracle. That's right. For how many years? Well, I was in Oracle for Asia mm. Pacific for about seven years, but Oracle in total for uh, roughly 11 years prior to joining BPI. Mm. And, and you were also with SGS, no? Yes, yes Swiss, I was there. Swiss was, company. It's a Swiss mm. um, company that was in charge of the um, pre-shipment and ship, <clears throat> pre-shipment inspection for the, the government. Mm. Yeah, I set up their HR actually several years ago. Before that, you were with also guidance, guidance counseling of San Beda. No? Yes, as a matter of fact, that's where I found my roots. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right straight from college, yeah. I went to counseling. I was like a 20 something year old uh, in an all guidance school. counselor at age 20? Yes. San Beda. Yeah, so I had to make myself look a little older yeah. <laughs> to be credible. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and but then, your so basic course was what? Um, I took a course, my undergrad, uh, undergraduate is in um, psychology, a psychology, but I did my master's in education. Then you also have a Harvard degree. Huh? Yeah, fortunately my bank, uh, Bank of Philippine Islands, sent me to um, Harvard uh -huh. for an advanced management program. EMP. Yeah, so we never really stopped learning, Mima. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Right. And then, so how did you actually go from, from that, like IT or actually a bank? Yeah. It's an interesting story because I, I've been in multinationals largely most of my life um, and I was doing a regional stint so as a HR practitioner it was like you know you've done your thing uh, when you've hit the region uh, at least I thought so um, and I wanted to um, bring whatever I learned globally um, to help the Philippines and I was when I decided to come back. It was also because I got travel tired. Are you were based abroad. I was based here, but doing a regional role, uh -huh. uh, which meant that I was traveling more times than I was here physically. Um, so that you know, I basically thought, hey, I keep doing this. I'm helping all the talent out there, but I'm not helping my own mm -hmm. Filipino talent. So I I said that I wanted to come home for personal reasons, but also for the reason of doing something to make a difference for my own country. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds so um, almost, uh, you know, so... So finally you have found your mooring in BPI. 
Yeah. yeah. How is it I as an so. employer? I think so. BPI is a, one of the best employers, um, I believe, in the um, financial they industry. They are an awardee for mm. that, you know. Yes, yeah, we yeah. did. We, we won under my um, uh, leadership. Uh, we won what we call the Employers Confederation of the Philippines uh, Kapatid Award, which yeah. really dealt with, uh, which really recognizes uh, employers for yeah. their best practices in uh, yeah. human resources. Mm. Yes. But with, with all this wealth of, of knowledge, you've been dealing with people, helping people mm. achieve you know, success within their organization. And then you are now the executive director of BPI Foundation. When did you start as a, as the? I as started the with the BPI Foundation just this year, just a few months just ago. Just actually. this year. Yes. July. July fourth. Yeah, it was. It's July. quite exciting because it's a different role. Um, one of the things when I went to the advanced management program in the U.S. at Harvard, um, the professors had said that after you finish this course, you're either going to do two things. One is you're either going to get divorced. Divorced. <laughs> or change your partner or find a new partner or you're going to do something different in your career. I obviously wasn't going to do anything about the first one. No? Yeah. I'm happily married with yeah. two wonderful children. Um, but I, you know, it, it gave me a, a sort of like an impetus to think about uh, what to do next. And I think it's so timely. I mean, I questioned it at some points because it was like, okay, is that what I, where I should go? Uh, but um, as the days go on, I have become more enamored with it. Primarily because I think it's beyond just helping employees, which is mm. what human resources is about. Yes. Um, now I have an opportunity and a bigger platform to actually do something for the larger community. And, um, and it's, a, it's, it's an eye-opener because there's just so much to do. <coughs> mm. And so we bring now, hopefully, um, the best practice of how to handle projects, how to handle um, cap capability development, because my passion is in actually development, it's in training. and learning and development. And so it's bringing that part of my, um, uh, my keen motivators uh, into a bigger realm, uh, mm -hmm. which is helping you know, capacity development, for example, for teachers or financial literacy for a larger group of individuals and so on and so forth. What do you, what do you see, Faye, that, that is lacking most for uh, that BPI Foundation can actually assist? What do you think is lacking most? Um, you know, it's like there's a lot. Because if you look at the huge um, issues that are confronting society today, there's just so much. Obviously, poverty is one big thing, but uh, without having to sound like a Miss Universe answer, no, <laughs> it's really somehow, at the end of the day, eradication of that poverty or more of social inclusion or financial inclusion. Mm. Um, so I think BPI, because we are a financial institution and a bank, it's so aligned to our very... Um, uh, raison d'etre, no? our own reason for being, which is banking, to bring financial health and wealth to a larger community. And as you know, it's like 78.5% of the population of the Philippines is unbanked. So 40 million Filipinos have no bank accounts. Exactly. And, and actually, they don't have bank accounts because they don't have money okay, to even put in the bank. So it's like, how do you, how do you actually um, uh, provide access to the banking um, you know, infrastructure, but also teaching them um, financial literacy. So, the basic mm. trust of BPA Foundation are financial inclusion, yes. education, and, and entrepreneurship. entrepreneurship. Uh, and environment, sorry. And environment. So, and environment. Three or four. Yeah, so it's entrepreneurship. So, yeah. around entrepreneurship yeah. would be, of course, um, uh, financial literacy and things yeah. like this, education, and, in, and the environment. Uh -huh. yeah. So, first, mm. education, what are the major projects in the pipeline or ongoing? Yeah. In education, um, short of having to go and teach everybody, okay, what we believe is working on the teachers. teachers so it's yeah. teacher education. Mm -hmm. So you have um, training educate, the trainers. You have yes. to educate the teachers so they can, they can educate well. Exactly. It's yeah, the yeah. rippling effect, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, and one of, the, one of our iconic um, programs is the DOST um, partnership, which is the Science Awards. And as we know, economic activity in the Philippines has Science to also awards be for teachers. Um, for this one, it's not teachers. This not one teachers. is for the for the students. Oh, okay, students. Um, but the science awards basically is to recognize um, scientific um, research, which I think is so by needed students. in the Philippines. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. by, by students. So they what are, what they are some make, of what are some make an of invention? Those, yeah. Ganyan, yeah. yeah. So we work with our ten partner schools mm -hmm. and. Um, the, their their topic is actually dependent on their you know what what the school's interest or the student's interest is, 
Um, but it is all for the advancement of scientific research. Um, it's in, it's in uh, um, partnership with the DOST, and most of our, it's quite prestigious, no? Um, I know my own daughter was uh, also a graduate of the University of the Philippines, yeah. molecular biology, and she used to tell me that, you know, it's one of the things that all the students aim for. So uh, that's one. To be a science awardee. Yes, mm -hmm. to be a science uh, awardee. So the other activities we do for teacher education includes professorial chairs. Mm -hmm. We work with um, partnership in, with Miriam College with this um, um, continuing education called Guru. Um, I can't remember the acronym, but it, it's basically a continuing education um, program which reaches um, teach, helping teachers teach better math, English, and science. Yeah. Yeah, so those are the things that are, I think, most critical. All right, we're going to continue this discussion. We'll be right back. You're watching Biz News. training the trainers you have a partnership with Miriam College so that's how right. do you actually help the teachers it's the teachers it's free for them to get that's right so these are usually public school teachers mm -hmm. um, elementary and high school and uh, they in partnership with Miriam Miriam basically does the actual teaching or uh, yeah the teaching and the provision of tools or learning aids for for the teachers. Do you have any input teachers on the, the course the, do you have an input on the curriculum? Because that's um, trends, there's yeah, a lot of changes yeah, now. Yeah, generally in terms of trends. Um, now, going forward, I would like to get a little bit more involved in it. Um, again, because of my own personal passion for development. How many teachers are in the course? Um, it could 20, run from 30 to 40. 30 to 40. Yeah, yeah. Lasting for how many semesters? Sorry? How many semesters? Oh, it's actually more on short courses. Uh, seminar, so these are core, yes, seminar. seminars or workshops. Equivalent yes. to say uh, 40 hours. Kind of yes, thing. yes. Uh, or, or then they get the certificate equivalent correct. to a master degree unit. Um, I'm not sure. Well, this one is, is part of the continuing education. Yeah. So it is to refresh teachers yeah. with, um, you know, with the latest trends or yeah. techniques in um, teaching. teaching. Uh, because the, the kids today are so different now, no? They're so, so you, technology is Exactly. No? The teachers exactly. need to keep up. Teacher. Exactly. Yeah. And um, we're thinking of uh, going in partnership, actually, with our Ayala Foundation, which is a yeah. sister company, um, because they have what they call text-to-teach, which is using, actually, um, mobile technology oh. and uh, IT technology yeah. to help teachers. Uh, that program has been there for quite a while. It's in the last two years, and it will be migrated, or um, I guess the word is uh, mainstreamed yeah. into uh, the curriculum of Dep Ed. I'm looking moving forward to see um, a similar type of program. Um, it's all, it's sort Along of the in, line of what? Um, again, in science in, teaching, in teacher education, oh. in science and pro potentially math. Yeah. So again, it's aligned to financial literacy. Um, using technology so we're we're just in the drawing stages of uh, the program but we hope that this is something we can launch in the very near future mm. yeah using technology, technology maximizes yeah. the reach of the course exactly yeah. and 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 one of the things that the president um, mr bong kon singh mr cesar kon singh of bpi had asked me to do was to look at some programs which would have a wider reach yeah. and i think technology has to play there yes then we can get yeah, what they call open yeah. education no? yes yeah. you so can download the course correct study by yourself exactly. you're supervised by a teacher or a mentor exactly. Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Then you report at the end of the period what you have learned and they will test you yeah. and they give you a certification. Right. Uh, and what I'm intrigued on also is the use of games again. Yes. because games, um, if we use it for education, is very powerful. No? That's, I games shall literally level up you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah. So it, entrepreneurship is also a very big part of uh, mm. what PPI. Uh, you teach also. people how to put up business? Yes. We have um, partnerships, so we do a lot of work which is really in partnership because my team is quite small. Yeah. 
and so we use leveraging um, uh, yeah. techniques. No, so we work with partners. Uh, yeah, we work with partners who have the right expertise. So, for example, we're working with ISEA, uh which is um, keen in social entrepreneurs. What is ISEA? Um, oh gosh. It stands I for ISEA. So it stands for International. Um, I, I have to remember yeah, it yeah. in a minute, but yeah. um, it basically they are basically a uh, nonprofit organization yeah, yeah. that deals with uh, social entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So they are help. What we did is we partner with them to um, uh, to develop again train the trainer materials uh, for a set of um, their trainers to go out yeah. and teach how to um, start up uh, and then try to how to prepare financial statements, annual reports, e read balance sheets. As you said. So yeah, if I'm yeah. an entrepreneur mm -hmm. um, and you I You also give cheap capital to, to the entrepreneur. I have uh, an idea, I need capital. Uh -oh. Can you lend me? That's me? something which again is for the future because oh, future. that is the version 2.0 yeah. if yeah. I may say yeah, so, yeah. which is also in the drawing board now. Yeah. Um, and we hope to be able to um, almost link, so in you know like angel investors and things like that. No? So mm -hmm. it's almost like uh, what we're what we're envisioning is um, potentially looking at um, call for you know business proposals from yeah. young okay. entrepreneurs. The idea is uh, small but uh, volume. Yeah. Five thousand yeah. to twenty thousand yeah. loan, which you pay yeah. after a certain short yeah. period, and yeah. you keep on drawing on it. Yeah. I should generate yeah. more sales and profit. Yeah. But is there an instrument in, in BPI where social entrepreneurs can actually tap? Um, yes, well, there is the BPI Banco, okay, for the very, very small. Love there is, you know. yes, there oh. is, of course, the BPI Family Bank, yeah. which deals with us SME loans. Yeah. Um, so these are, like I said, version 2.0, where we hope to leverage on what we have already built over the years. Um, because in the past, it has largely been. Um, Educational oriented. No? Um, as we move into, um, you know, how to further help these young, you know, the up-and-coming entrepreneurs, then we bring in uh, not only advisory but also um, potentially financial Kasi investors. Uh, small entrepreneurs, they have to learn a lot. No, yeah. you have to shepherd them. And, yes, uh, because, yes, uh, yes. You can extend the loan, but they yeah. need to be educated that they must pay back the loan. Yeah. Kasi bakala nila total uh, I, free. Oh, well. I think um, actually what we have seen, and I think it's been uh, proven by many of my other colleagues, the small loaners are actually the best payers. Yeah, me. 98 <laughs> percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Repayment rate. Repayment yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, okay. So, for example, for Banco, that's for for a small for SMEs. What's the limit? Actually, that's for microfinance. Micro. What's uh -oh. the limit for for the microfinance? Um, small loans, lang yun eh. I, I hundred thousand. Yeah, is that too less, big? That's very less, big than oh, that's very, less than a hundred thousand. Less than a hundred. Less than a hundred. So, so then, going back to the foundation, the BPI foundation itself. Well, how, how what specifically has been done for entrepreneurs? Okay, so we have, as I said, uh, we've partnered with largely on the education yeah. part or on capacity development. Uh -huh. So it's more capacity development right now. We have a capacity development, that's also training and Yes, uh, that's training. And making them uh, 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 for capable, example I just came So from you're a finance one oh one, marketing one oh yeah, one. Exactly. I just came back from Raw City, actually yeah. I flew in yesterday. And this was uh, what we call the show me teach me. Um, in coordination Funny show me teach me. Yeah that's in coordination with DTI, no? Um, and so the Show Me, Teach Me are for the DTI clients. Um, they come to us and uh, we have um, trainers from DTI who basically teach, um, uh, for example, the one in Roja City, uh, just ongoing now, no? uh, talks about packaging and marketing. So this is like an advanced yeah. course. Food or non-food. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So we had about, you know, about 40 people uh, yesterday and another 40 tomorrow today. You know? Um, to do uh, to learn about um, packaging, packaging and yeah. branding, and again with, with the intention of, of being more competitive uh, for ASEAN 2015, uh, we've hit 32 cities over the years that we've run this as, uh, Show Me Teach Me. But prior to that, we were teaching bas the basics, no? so how to set it up, um, you know, how to do financial, uh, you know, the financial, your financials, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. This this year, this round of activities we're doing is 
one level up, which is what we call more advanced, but talking about how to package and how to package. Packaging, that means designing a logo. Yes, a yes, and oh. it was so interesting. Because uh, mm -hmm. buying is an emotional experience, no? Tama. Fifty percent of the buying decision is emotion. Oh, yung ganda nito, hanggan na. Tama. Di mo inintindi kung bagay ba sa iyan, effective ba sa iyan. Pero mark na ganda ang ka. Oh, oh. Like, like, just like bugs. Oh, Why oh. are they so overpriced? <laughs> because of the emotional experience, no? People are queuing up to buy Chanel bags or Louis Vuitton bags or Hermes. Mm. Oh, why? Because you can just get, get any leather made bag and oh, it will nga, save no? the same purpose. Oh, oh, nga, but but not the emotionalism of it. That's why yeah. you have to need branding. That's uh, right. Para we capture people like you. you know, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. So, you, you nga, no? um, so, so far, how many have learned uh, <coughs> this teach me and show me? We've gone to 32 cities. Uh -huh. um, so 20 people per city. More than 20, it's probably 50 so or so. So about 800 people yeah, about have uh, uh, under a thousand uh, over thousand. the. But you were going to say something about some anecdotes that you find that yeah. sounds interesting. Like yesterday, um, you know, you could have a very good product. So these people, these entrepreneurs, brought their <coughs> products, and it, because it was a food, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, food um, uh, group, uh, they were bringing in, you know, from their Tocino. Well, this is Raja City, so it's the dried fish or um, uh, tasty goodies, you know, the, yeah. uh, and things like this. And um, they actually uh, brought their product and they brought um, materials. So we have materials there, we have software, which helps them, um, you know, we teach them how to actually create mm. their logo. Tama yung sinabi niyo, sir, Tony, because yeah. it's basically, you know, the eye. Yeah. That's and, right. and our instructor was even showing how they had to have various, um, um, uh, what is this versions of their you know their yeah, packaging mm. so sa oh, pangkasino oh. sa kay loko sang longganisan nila lalagyan nila ng toothpick i don't know why <laughs> kasama yung toothpick pa pinipirito yung longganisan ah, baka kasi after you eat ano may toothpick <laughs> <na. laughs> <Ganun. laughs> all right we're going to continue this discussion we'll be right back you're watching business we're speaking with fan <laughs> we'll be back. Let's talk about the environment. Everyone talks about sustainability. Can mm. you explain what sustainability actually means? Yeah, you know, it's it's such a elusive word, um, and I'll I'll try to talk about it in terms of business and I think doing good business. You know? um, we all live in one planet. We're all interconnected. Um, whatever we do has a direct effect in one way or the other. You know? So when we talk about sustainability at BPI, we really talk about how we address societal issues, okay? uh, how we mitigate uh, environmental or climate change, and how, how we actually make uh, profit. So it's really talking about the um, triple bottom line, so to speak. You know? So what we do, we believe that um, as an organization, as a corporation, we have our social corporate responsibility to make sure that whatever we do um, uh, is um, responsible. I think that's the the right. That means word. you don't take from the future. Yes, we For actually. The future generation. Exactly. <laughs> we actually consider the future in anything that we do. Um, I mean, I think uh, we hear a lot about the um, uh, the three planet thing. You know, where yes. at the moment uh, we're we're. We're, we're consuming as we're if we have three planets. Exactly. Today. We are allowed only about one trillion tons to, uh, of carbon mm -hmm. in the next 20 years. Yeah. Otherwise, global warming yeah. will hit 4% uh, yeah. uh, 4 degrees Celsius. Yeah. And we're going to get cooked in our own we're planet. We're going to get cooked yeah. in our own planet. I mean, progress is moved so quickly that we, I think, forgot that you know we have a finite mm -hmm. world. Yeah. So sustainability really talks about uh, responsibility in terms of yeah. how you consume and how you um, return, no? so how you are able to um, uh, renew. Because um, recently we just had a climate summit, just yeah. recently, global yeah. climate summit, where everybody is actually now focusing on uh, climate change mitigation. 
for BPI in within your circle of influence. Yeah. What has BPI done in terms of uh, climate change mitigation? Yeah. Let me let me tell you a bit of a background on um, the climate change uh, work that we have done. We've actually worked um, several years ago under the uh, previous president Gigi Montenola. Um, we realized, you know, things are happening around us uh, very quickly. And I mean, weather was just like we didn't know that these things would be so harsh. We did not know that Andre would happen. No? We didn't know, no. So. What you happened? Didn't know would and happen then it would come back after two years. No? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's like every year something was going on. Right. So um, we felt that we had to go and secure, actually, uh, or find out what we needed to do about branches. Uh, we have over 800 branches in the Philippines across the nation. And so it, we started off with a study on what about what is going to happen to these cities and communities where we have branches? Are our branches actually built the right way, and so on and so forth? So what started out, out as an internal um, requirement, you know, risk mitigation on our part, actually we worked with the WWF as our partners um, with the first 12 cities and now World it's 16 like cities. Hunt. Yes. Um, and they did a study for yeah, us. Yes, the chairman, right? Uh, no. Um, he's the director? No, he, no, 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 he's not. Um, um, it's headed by uh, It's headed Lori by Lori Tan. Tan yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the chairman is um, Vince Paris, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Um, anyway. So, um, yeah, so we started off with this 12 cities. We studied 12 cities where, you know, we identified 12 cities of the many cities that we're in. And we did a, um, a study on the cities in terms of climate change. Um, then we added another four cities. So we finished 16 cities, actually. And, and with the WWF, we identified basically what are the risks that we're going to be involved. As a matter of fact, the story is that Tacloban and the Yolanda thing, mm -hmm. uh, we were there with a scenario building exercise um, where we were, okay, so this, these are the patterns of, of change and um, uh, challenges that would confront a city and what would the city um, need to do? You know? So we had um, multi-sectorial um, uh, was this uh, individuals there in, in, in these uh, sessions and they came out with um, uh, what they were saying they named it actually as part of the um, risk factors. They named it like um, Matakluban, no, because Mata they had in, they had intent they had seen mm -hmm. based on the study Mata and the Kluban research. Means, uh, yeah. literally to cover, yeah. to cover, right? um, And this was like months before Yolanda happened. It was just ironic oh. but sad and all that. But but just to just to illustrate um, how important it is to see what's going on um, in the various cities that we had. So using. Uh, the lens of climate change because we all know, know the El Nino effect, you know, global warming, this is all here to stay. Um, and each of these cities would be at risk for various reasons depending mm -hmm. on um, the location and how, how you know. Uh, so, Papano yung Matakloban concept? It also means to overwhelm. Eh? No, parang ano, parang I, I, I just use that as an example because uh, they had spoken about the big, you know, the big um, parang disaster. But they were talking about it like within 30 years because what it we had done was scenario yeah. building mm. uh, for you know trying to look at the future 30 years down the road. What are what do when we have to? When was that session uh, no. before the? Yolanda? Just shortly before Yolanda. Shortly before. Actually. My gosh. Shortly, shortly before. Mm. Just months before. You know. But so given BPI's reach, because you had 800, 800 branches. 800 plus, yeah. Yeah. 840 or so, yeah. I have, you've, you've got very wide. Yeah. Reach nationwide. In the case of a bank, the patch you grow in your, your ATM machines will, above, will be above water. No, <laughs> no that was that the. They'll be working uh -oh. within a, uh, a few uh, minutes. Yeah. Actually, that was the reason why we studied the cities. Yeah. It was really to see um, how, you know, how um, prepared, how yeah. ready we were for, mm. for disaster. Um, but how what we have found out. disaster proof your yeah. banks are, yeah. your branches are. Yeah. But what we found out was a wealth of information, and I and I think you know version 2.0 now that we're looking at is to work with the various um, communities and the various city governments, um, as well as private sector and the NGOs of each of these locations, to look at um, opportunities to actually um, uh, prevent. You know, um, what are some of the learnings that that you've uh, that you can share? Yeah. Some Yeah, like. Um, for example, in um, uh, Cebu, uh, they 
coming out from the uh, scenario building um, uh, exercises actually uh, came out the um, uh, Mega Cebu uh, consortium, you know, which is really looking at uh, how the city can organize itself and prepare. You know. mm. um, and they, the, you know, it has been, it's taken a life of its own because it is now, you know, it's beyond us now. You know. It is actually the information from us has uh, catapulted this um, uh, ongoing activity. Yeah. So in, in BPI in Cebu, what is it doing? W what do you mean? In how terms does of climate adaptation, yeah. how uh, does this is, work is but just a partner. No, it mm. is now just but a partner. But what Kaya I think, yeah. Tingin ko lang as a bank client. Uh -oh. Kailan yung ATM ko maandar, maski yeah. lubog yung ano. Yeah, pero beyond kalye. that eh. Beyond that na, it's more on development for the future. Uh -huh. No, uh -huh. um, it's on it's on preparing like do they are, like for example, what, what we see the uh, that the will take place. <laughs> 100 years, yeah. the highest flood level, and you should be at least 10 meters yeah, above that. That's right. Oh. Yeah, and whether you should start building your cities away yeah. you know, from yeah. the the areas that you know would be flooded. You know, yeah. um, right now I think you know the airports would would are in the areas which would be flooded. Mm. So should it happen? No. So I, I suppose what we're saying is from the information that we have gotten, um, city government and um, private sector. Um, can actually take this information and yeah. create um, a uh, climate change mitigate you know mm. to mitigate that uh, potential. Th that's the consortium. Yeah, that's what they do. So, mm. for example, um, some of some of this some of the information is is just there, and what we would like to do is actually see how we can broker almost. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's the right word, but how to um, influence. But that's clear. Yeah. Yeah, influence. I think um, uh, the right entities to partake of the solutioning mm. you know, for what we have seen as you know what and we have raised as the problem. And how would you encourage these companies to actually yeah. put their their pound of flesh yes. in? Yes. Yeah. Uh -oh. I must be able to withdraw my money so <laughs> I can have uh, buy emergency food. <clears throat> I think I'm able to contact my relatives yeah. or next of kin para masabi ko kung saan ako located, kung hanapin ko kung nasaan mga anak ko, if yeah. they are in safe hands. And number three, I must be able to uh, have access to government service. Yeah, yeah and, that, uh, that's... And the BIP, the Ayala Group, have companies that have that product and that service. Mm -hmm. Globe for calling, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, yeah. BPI for money, yeah. and uh, siguro kaya yeah. the organization. Yan yung disaster prepared yeah, yeah, uh -oh. yeah. But mm -hmm. I think even beyond disaster preparedness, I think there are two elements. So there's that disaster preparedness yeah. that you're speaking about, which we're also you know, trying to see disaster what we can do preparedness. to help. Uh, uh, and one, then the other one yeah. is really building to mitigate it. Yeah, so yeah, for yeah. example, mm -hmm. if you know that this area will have a massive flooding, yeah. um, you know, I, I guess the intelligent yeah, decision there. there is to relocate or yeah. to build elsewhere. But to relocate means money. Mm -hmm. you know? oh, oh, so yeah. that's why Anoe. Um, it's really an and there are such things as ancestral home, ancestral spirit. They don't want to leave their place. Oh, okay. yeah. All right, we're going to continue this discussion. We'll be right back and watching this. News. to ask you about this still on the environment but uh, you BPI actually has a tie up with the IFC International right. Finance uh, um, Corporation on the sustainable energy finance right. program what is that because I think only BPI is the one that's doing that and it's, right. that's quite important yeah yeah so in as early as I think 2008 um, we worked with the uh, IFC uh, with this sustainable energy financing program, and uh, over the years, we've been able to um, hit, you know, several um, corporations uh, that have taken on uh, some of the um, the uh, loans that has been available. Um, primarily and these for are specific, yeah, primarily for sustainable energy. So, for example, um, 
you know, we have had, um, <clears throat> just recently, we just went, we just had a sustainable to finance award. And, um, you know, there was a, a green resort that's located in Palawan, uh, with, uh, w which was able to actually look at energy and um, water efficiency with the waste management system, solar and wind installation. Um, so did they get financing? Yes, they the got financing. And there, there is a, um, another one, which is, um, just, just to give you some examples, no? uh, refrigerated services, um, uh, which is a highly energy efficient cold storage facility in Quezon City and Taguig. And you know we have all these energy saving um, metrics that we follow. I mean, they, they're they're looking at something like 13 million a year savings mm. because of um, uh, the um, the energy efficiency yeah. that they have been using. So, if um, companies have plans like this to to make their buildings green or their properties green, they can actually apply for loans. That's right. That is that's right. Um, there is a um, uh, the sustainable energy finance program benefits. Uh, we have a team that helps you identify opportunities, basically, for energy savings. We help you choose appropriate technology for the energy efficiency or renewable energy project. We help you calculate potential energy savings mm -hmm. and um, evaluate, basically, the feasibility. Uh, we link you up with technology Priority by an, uh, ng bank financing, you know, make, making your building green. Because they say making your building green adds about 4 to 8 percent of cost. Mm. At the onset. Yeah. Oh, at the onset. Yeah. But it does the savings. Yeah. yeah that, it's, it's actually the savings. I mean, obviously, uh, renewable energy is new. Um, and as, as we were speaking earlier, I think um, we are all aware that we are, you know, our energy consumption uh, and our energy supply is uh, not sufficient. Uh, mm -hmm. The yeah. so called records that renewable energy is not cost efficient. Um, I, like uh, yeah. using up corn to to make ethanol, might as well eat the, eat the, the corn. corn rather than <laughs> use the Because there's a food uh, yeah, yeah, problem, ethanol. yeah. <laughs> that also the sugar to create yeah. energy from sugar. Yeah. There's uh, two sides, I think there's yeah. two, two, um, two sides to it. No? Like uh, coal, hate ng mundo yang coal, but it's the cheapest form of producing energy. Uh -oh. So, and they say that no energy is more expensive than having a polluted energy. Yeah, yeah Alamo, it's 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 um yeah, anyway, it's, it's, a part of your it's it's a difficult you know the options are difficult. Yeah, yeah it's oh, very difficult. Oh. But I think I think the key the key guideline here is really being responsible and yeah. intelligent the in choosing. The key guideline is look at the larger picture yeah. and the longer oh, oh, term. Oh, oh, oh because right. it's the it's oh. the longer it's the term. Longer you do term. something. Just, uh, yeah. money immediate mm -hmm. in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Will this be available for LGUs? Because there are some LGUs that are actually looking to put solar panels on of their course, schools. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah. It is available. Like um, solar panels, some we have, solar panel. Mm, huh? mm. Mm. We we're speaking about solar panels. Yeah. Um, BPI actually internally um, is looking at <clears throat> an initial phasing of, um, of you know under fifty or close to fifty um, uh, branches, which we will um, uh, In install, will install solar panels in. Um, and I think that's what they call the blended. Um, energy where, wherein you're you know, still so part of the grid. We have mm. the, these branches that are slim but uh, mean. Yeah, oh. yung, yung, I know, oh. your small footprint, oh. uh, small also footprint. green banks is what oh. we call mm. it. We green have, banks. yeah. Uh, they're uh, they're so, so very good. Yeah. Kasi konti lang space, but they do the same function yeah. as a regular uh -oh. bank. No? Uh -oh. Like, oh. the, we, we have one installed. It's very experimental. Uh, yeah, more it's than experimental. Meron kami ngayon sa ADB, and you know, there's several others yeah, that we're, ADB, yeah. 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 So it's a very small footprint, um, but we ha l l rely also heavily on technology. the technology, technology. Mm. Uh, yeah. and the efficiency of you know the client. Um, so this is the traffic. Mm. Uh, and this is also very good for uh, uh, deploying BPI abroad. No? You need a small footprint because mm. the rent is very high, but cost mm. of doing business is very high. Mm. But you have to serve a very wide, a wider range of mm. customers, like our OFWs. Who are everywhere? No? They are in more than 100 countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, where do you see the trends uh, moving forward? There's really, like you said, there's a lot on the plate. You want to do so much. Yeah, there's a lot. I think it's building up on what the the BPI Foundation already has at the moment. I think the three uh, pillars are still very relevant. 
um, yung pillars, the, yung education, education entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, and, and environment. environment. And what do you intend to, feel, to do? Uh, you, did you have a particular mandate when you took over BPI Foundation? Uh, yeah. Fair, I, this is your money. I want you to multiply this and yeah. at the same time help people. Yeah. Ano Actually, it's a, it's a little bit more on the challenge was you tell me what you think we should be going uh -huh. for as uh -huh. long as it is going to create a, the good. No? Uh -huh. Um, and we'll see about the money, uh -huh. you know, so I think so money's that's not pretty, a problem. well, yeah. it, it's not that it's not a problem, but I think it's more the, um, uh, uh, you're given the money if, if, if your project mm. is really worthwhile yeah. it, you know? so yeah. we have to come up with worthwhile, high impact, larger reach type of what projects. Are, what are some of these projects, uh, Faye? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, so it's building up on uh, what we have already created over the yeah. years, so under teacher education, uh, for example, uh, and financial literacy, um, we would like to, uh, on the drawing board um, at the moment, are, is a project which looks at um, the use of technology in financial literacy. So what does that mean? Um, looking at potentially uh, online uh, education, uh, looking at mobile, so bite-sized pieces of information that comes through, um, through mobile. We're looking at um, comics, Comics, mm. then. Yeah, even media, because we want to reach, um, you know, not everybody. I mean, yeah. it's great to say technology will reach people, but not everybody has technology. So you would have so to you go spend through. about 2,000 to 4,000 yeah. or even uh -oh. 6,000 mm. pesos to have a cell phone. No? Uh oh. Um, so, well, hopefully, the idea here is to work with um, similar thinking individuals yeah, or yeah. companies yeah. that uh, have that expertise. So if it's yeah. If it's mobile, for example, maybe working with Globe yeah. or working with you know uh, a telco company. Um, <clears throat> if it's uh, you know technology, maybe working with a, you know a technology company, and you know if it if it will require. So so what we the, the the idea or the template really is leveraging what we currently have, building the next level, and also bringing in partners with the like-minded thinking of you know. How do we actually help alleviate um, poverty? I mean, as I said, no. So so far, mm. mga spe any specific projects identified? Maybe? Some milestones that you can actually share. Um, it's drawing board pa eh, this uh, particular board, project that mm. we have. Si ko, um, expertise kasi mo, three months lang ako eh. So. And expertise <laughs> my experience all these years yeah, has been with people, no? Yeah. Managing yeah. people, relating to yeah. people, developing people. Yeah. Uh, but a large part is it also development, meaning capacity development yes. or talent management. Yeah. No? Yeah. So obviously, um, you know, the discipline of understanding what the needs are of our, our particular audiences, no? so if it's children or if it's... Would you have projects that's specific to the Leyte, Yolanda areas? Ah, good question. No? We actually, uh, right after the disaster, we did a, a, a program, volunteerism program called 10 plus 10. Uh, which 10, plus 10, 10 plus 10, which was uh, to raise 10 million. If the employees were able to raise 10 million, the bank would, would match it. Would match match it. it. So we, nice. you know, that was a program I was doing when I was still part of HR, and we actually made it. No, we made over over 10. It was Fantastic. like 11. So, we, so it was matched, and then we, then we had other um, money, so we actually have about 30-some mil that we have um, specific for building of of schoolhouses. Mm. Schoolhouse. Together, is it, this is together with Habitat for Humanity? Yes, or? that is our, um, our partner in the build-up. Yeah. 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 All right, we're going to continue this discussion. We'll be right back. You're watching Biz News. Hey, uh, your professional life has always been about people, relating to them, hiring mm -hmm. them, developing them, and uh, deploying them. Uh, uh, what are some of the, uh, say, techniques or tips you can provide entrepreneurs like me? I have uh, my own small office, a publication uh, of hiring people, getting people. Mama techniques. Yeah. 
Ooh, that's a you're, you know that's a very powerful question. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think over the years, what I've sort of like come to um, learn, you know, yeah. um, is that it's very important to select. I select uh, properly. B2G. B2G, yeah. Um, don't settle, though. Yeah, you know, because I mean, don't settle for mediocrity. There, there are always people for certain businesses, certain yeah. times of a business, and so on and so yeah. forth. So. Um, What's important is actually what I look for are learnability. Uh, okay, does a person like to learn? Yeah. Because um, I think you know, there's you never know everything any any yeah, way. You know? But if you have a penchant for learning and you're so open to um, looking at new things, yeah. uh, then you know that's more than fifty percent of the of, yeah. of the job. The other one is I think passion. Um, and so passion actually, you know, parang attitudinal din yun, no? So it's really, they say, uh, choose attitude rather than um, just attitude, plain, yeah. you know, skill, mm -hmm. no? Because skill you can teach. So uh, the passion, I think, um, to do well and to, you know, to excel. make a difference and to yeah. excel yeah. Um, has been, I think, and I would probably include a third one, curiosity. curiosity. Yeah, because the curiosity uh, will keep you forever having a fresh set of eyes Open because mind, yeah. sometimes what happens, diba, we get so in a rut. They say you no, know, where you only want to do things a certain way. Curiosity also broadens your imagination. Yes, no, no. and that gives you innovation. And that, yeah, no. innovation. Uh -uh. And innovation so, leads you to invention. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. And so, invention leads you to meeting your customer <laughs> needs. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Correct. But uh, oh. that's very easy to say. But how do you apply it in real uh, life? Um, obviously, during hiring stage, yes, yeah. uh, where you can make a decision. I mean, that decision is so critical because if the yeah. person is already with you, then it, you know, yeah. it's different. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in the hiring stage, if you are able to actually hire, there are questions and techniques to to see, you know, if yeah. a person has um, curiosity and yeah. you know his ability to learn as yeah. well as um, the passion. You know? So by Asking targeted questions that would um, help display or show yeah. you um, his they would always put inclination. their, you know, best foot forward. So oh, how oh. do you go yeah. through that right. first screening of yeah. that shield? Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a, in psychology we have what we call behavioral psychology. Yeah. You know, so behavior. So what, what we say also is uh, past behavior predicts future behavior. Yeah. So if you are able to target your question in such a way that you ask for specifics. Of, uh, of an occasion or a situation where a person was confronted with, um, you know, um, uh, the ch the chance to actually show his learning capacity, then that would be one. Or if you see his re resume and you see that he has been able to have a progressive um, type of a career or a uh, work environment, mm -hmm. then that's another one. No? So so it's it's that. Theory around the you know past behavior predicts future behavior yeah. and asking targeted questions can help, okay, yeah. um, and you know some people even go and say they do simulations you know um, wherein they try to look for for example empathy you know the ability to yeah. empathize with other people. Pero yung uh, learnability, passion, and curiosity. curiosity. Mm. Where, where where does ambition come in? Or is that the definition of ambition itself? Um, ambition. Because you could be ambitious, right? But you may not be the best ah, mm. uh, It doesn't mean member. passion. It doesn't mean That's passion. Yeah, I think if you have passion, that usually you know projects you forward. Because eh? um, ambition could be, you know, it's also projecting forward. But as I said, it doesn't necessarily mean that you would be the best employee. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. And then when the person is already with your team, then it's a matter of developing uh, or yeah. creating opportunities where you can actually okay. uh, help him develop those yeah. areas. Well, thank you. Thank you for those you the best for, for BPI thank Foundation, you. Faye. We wish you more power and luck, all the Faye. best of luck. Thank you. I need it. I need it. It's a big <laughs> job to do. Thank you very much. Thank you thank for you being there. on our show, Faye. You watch another episode of Biz News. I'm Elizabeth Lee together with Tony Lopez. See us every Monday at, at 10.30. We'll see you again next week. Have a good night. God bless. Thanks for watching.